Are you one of those people that believe that the high performance power plan will actually deliver you the best performance you can have? Well, you might actually be losing performance. Nani? Some days ago I made a video testing Windows 11 23 half 2 versus 24 half 2 to see which Windows version would perform faster CPU wise. And in that same video I had some interesting results regarding Ryzen 9 7900X 3D and 9900X. So I tested things a bit more and I found out that most times the dual CCD Ryzen CPUs, the ones that have two core packages, let's call them that, are very sensitive to the Windows power plans. I'm terrible. When you install Windows, the default power plan is balanced and I usually select high performance power plan for all my builds because high performance means higher performance. Well, not really. According to AMD's reviewer's guide, all Ryzen CPUs featuring a dual CCD layout should be using balanced mode for better performance, due to scheduling. So this means balance delivers the best performance. Well, not really. It happens that on top of Windows being highly inconsistent when it comes to CPU performance, even on different clean installations, it also does a shitty job when it comes to scheduling, meaning that in some game scenarios where it should be using just one CCD, for example, for the best performance, it might be using two and vice versa. So how do you exactly know uh, which games run better on one or two CCDs? Or which games run better or worse on those configurations? Or which one should you choose? You don't. You don't. <laughs> Because in some games the scheduler works well, and in others, not really. So on top of these two power plans, I also added a third test, where I use Windows Affinity to make sure that the games are using the first CCD of each CPU only. This to see how the 18 games tested perform, in case the scheduler isn't doing its job properly. Interested? Let's watch. Starting with Playtale Requiem, but in a village area to really push the CPU, and I found that this game cares a lot about latency, as using the high performance delivered lower performance, higher performance delivered lower performance, you heard it right, on both CPUs. But manually setting the CPU to just use the 6 cores 12 threads from the first CCD increased the 9900X's performance by 5% and the 7900X 3D's performance by 10%, now outperforming the 9900X, which is quite relevant. You know, relevant. Like today's sponsor, GVG More! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But I also wanted to state that by making this, well, levels will load a bit slower than before and the loading in some new areas, well, might bring some stutters, something that wasn't presented before uh, locking the, the game to the first CCD. But well, I guess it's a trade. Counter-Strike 2 is a game that doesn't use many cores or threads and latency is usually king, possibly even King Kong. Here the balanced mode is once again outmatching high performance, especially on the 9900X since it doesn't feature the 3D cache. And even there it is 15% faster than the 7900X 3D. But as soon as we manually tweak the game to just use the cores from the first CCD, the 7900X 3D gets a 14% performance increase, putting it almost on par with the 9900X in terms of averages, but 16% faster in the 1% lows. Cyberpunk 2077 is another game where the same thing happens. Balanced mode is slightly faster than the high performance one, but when we lock the game to the first CCD only, the performance shoots up, making the 9900X 6% faster and the 7900X 3D 11%. And in theory, the balanced mode should perform like the affinity to CCD0 or CCD0 in these games, but in most scenarios it doesn't, sometimes it only works well for a time when clean installing Windows, uh, but then it goes nuts once again, so thanks Microsoft and AMD. 
As for Spider-Man Remastered, things finally change. This game is very demanding when it comes to RAM bandwidth, and this is why the dual CCD Ryzen CPUs work so well in this game, because having two CCDs will increase your RAM bandwidth, mostly the read and copy, I believe. Also increasing the game's performance, of course, and that's why also locking the game to the first CCD only works decently on the 7900X 3D, because it has 3D cache to compensate. On the 9900X, though, the high performance mode is the way to go, and I tested this several times, so I can confirm that the high performance power plan works much better in this game. Something that gets even more ground when tested with ray tracing, where we have a 15% increase going from balanced to high performance power plan on the 9900X, with the results for the 7900X 3D being flatter, due of course to the 3D cache. And Starfield is another odd scenario, but for both CPUs. This game uses the CPU like a lot. And even though this is the case, the performance seems to be slightly better when only using one CCD of 6 cores to off threads. Somehow. Maybe this happens because the game loves cores but also loves latency, I don't really know, so having a bit less cores but way less latency as well leads to higher results, with a 5% boost for the 9900X. Once again, really odd. The Last of Us though, unlike Starfield, does absolutely need a lot of cores. And that can be easily seen as making the game using the first CCD only makes the game stir like hell, making the game actually unplayable in some scenes due to the high CPU utilization, as seen here, where the threads from the first CCD are constantly at 90% or higher. And the need of those cores is so much that even when locking the game to the first CCD only, it will still use some cores from the other CCD, like you're seeing right here. So overall, this game generally performs better with a high performance power plan. In The Witcher 3 we're running around Novigrad, which is well known to put CPUs to work, and in this case scenario balanced or high performance modes are really close to each other, and when locking the game to the first CCD only, the 9900X gets absolutely no gains over the high performance power plan, as expected. The 7900X 3D on the other hand got a little performance uplift of 4% that happened once again because of the 3D cache in the first CCD only, helping with the gaming performance. And Assassin's Creed Origins is also quite CPU limited, but in most scenarios that happens not because of the CPUs themselves, but because of the game using the port optimization on top of the X11. As for the results, they're basically equal for both CPUs here. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a game that absolutely loves cash, and this is why we get these results. The 9900X gets around the same performance with all plans, as it should be from the start, but with a balanced mode still delivering the best results, with the 7900X 3D also delivering its best results with a balanced mode. When using the high performance mode though, the game data starts kind of getting pushed more and more to the second CCD, which means that it isn't taking a good advantage from the 3D cache which is on the first CCD only, which leads to lower performance. And remember what I told you about Assassin's Creed Odyssey and bad optimization on top of the X11? Well, that sums it up, as with Assassin's Creed Mirage, we were having around let's say almost 180 FPS in highly populated areas, while in Assassin's Creed Origins we were barely reaching 120, so it's a lot of difference. As for the results, they are all within the margin of error for this game, with the performance mode showing slightly better results, especially for the 9900X, being 3% faster. Moving to Fortnite, you won't see the affinity results as the game wouldn't allow me to, constantly telling me that the action was blocked. It is what it is, I guess, but in terms of results, they are all within the margin of error here. On PUBG, though, we have a very odd scenario, where the performance mode works better for the 9900X, as it should, but much worse for the 7900X 3D, where the balanced mode was the fastest one, being 4% faster than the manual CCD tuning, and 20% faster than the high performance mode option. Assetto Course is another game that doesn't really like the performance mode for the Ryzen 9 CPUs, since using both CCDs gets us higher latencies, and considering this game doesn't really take much advantage of the extra memory bandwidth, we get these odd results, where the balanced mode delivers the same FPS as the forced affinity, meaning that the balanced mode was already working well in this game, 
While the high performance mode only delivers around 85% of its performance on the 7900X 3D, being the decrease much lower with the 9900X. Far Cry 6 is a game that I've seen getting huge performance uplifts by tweaked RAM timings and sub timings, but it seems that it likes the high performance power plan the most, delivering slightly higher FPS with both CPUs, but nothing really crazy or relevant, of course. And in Hogwarts Legacy, we have the 9900X performing around the same in all situations, but we have the 7900X 3D actually benefiting from manually locking the game to the first CCD where the 3D cache is. It seems Windows and chipset drivers aren't working entirely well for this game, with a 7900X 3D, as the game is still using some cores from the second CCD when using the balanced mode. That's why we get a performance uplift when locking to the first CCD only, I guess. In Ghost of Tsushima, we have the 7900X 3D performing better with the balanced mode, delivering a bit higher 1% loads when locking the game to the first CCD, but the 9900X delivers the best performance available when using performance mode, being 6% faster than balanced mode in the averages and 11% faster in the 1% loads. And once again, I tested this several times, still the same results. And our final game tested is Need for Speed Unbound, where we get a massive performance decrease when running the game on the first CCD only. In this game, the 9900X is 9% faster than the 7900X 3D, with the high performance mode being the best choice. And since this game benefits a lot from the higher memory bandwidth, lower timings and most importantly, a lot of cores, the performance dropped down, well, as soon as we limited to only 6 cores 12 threads, as the CPU was almost all the time at over 90% usage across that same CCD, as can be seen right now, of course. So, for this game, enabled performance mode, of course. And to finalize, we have the 17 games average. And if you agglomerate all these results, what we get when enabling the high performance power plan is 0.7% difference on the 9900X and the decreased performance with the 7900X 3D. That unlike the 9900X, also gets a performance uplift of 2.7% when obligating the games to run on the first CCD only, due of course to the 3D cache. But in general, yeah, performance mode for the 9900X and almost any CPU and balanced mode for the dual CCD X 3D one so far. And well, guys, as you saw, this was a interesting video with some interesting results. And I did make a video about Windows balanced and power and power saving and high performance power plans back in the days, like the days were like two years ago or something like that. And in terms of single CCD CPUs, which are most of them Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 CPUs, this won't be an issue. So selecting high performance mode should be always the, the best thing to do in most scenarios, okay? But if you are going for a dual CCD solution or if you are going specially for a Ryzen 9 7900X 3D or if you are going for the upcoming Ryzen 9 9900X 3D, unless they change the cache structure, it will work exactly the same or unless they really, really improve the chipset drivers and the Windows scheduler, it will be the same. So most times balanced mode for the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D and high performance for any other scenarios. But if you're still using a Ryzen 9, being it a Ryzen 9, uh, I mean, 3900X, 5900X, 7900X, X3D, 9900X, it doesn't really matter. As long as it is a Ryzen 9, it features a dual CPU layout. So you might actually be losing performance in some scenarios if you're using the high performance mode. Like we saw in Assetto Courses, Cyberpunk and The Witcher 3, for example. And if you want to go even further, you can just select high performance. And then in the games that you know that really, really just run better on the first CCD, like CS2, for example, and some several others, 
videos, you just go and select the affinity of the course to the first CCD. And in that case scenario, especially if your chip has X3D cache, the performance will be much better. But yeah, I made this video because I thought it would be really interesting to show you the differences in between the power plants. This is not a topic that most people test and definitely in, in laptops and maybe in mini computers where the power is really, really restricted. Going from power saving to balance to high performance will indeed make the difference performance wise. But in desktop computers, the difference is basically null because once again, we're talking about a non-restricted scenario, a non-power a non restricted scenario like a Ryzen 9 CPU and so on. One. It just makes the difference because of the window scheduling, not because of the power itself. So yeah, AMD and Windows need to do better regarding the Ryzen 9 CPUs, especially the Ryzen 9 CPUs with 3D cache like the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D because lots of people are losing a lot of performance, especially with that CPU. AMD and Microsoft need to do better. And well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave your comment in the comment section. And by the way, let me know if you tested these and uh, what are your results if you're using a laptop, if you're using a mini computer, if you're using a desktop and which CPU you're using and so on. And if the power plants did make a difference or not, because as you saw in some scenarios they do. And if you have an older Ryzen 9 CPU, please test like games like The Witcher, Assetto Course and so on, test those games and let me know in the comment section which power plan works better for you on an older Ryzen 9 CPU, like let's say the 5900X, the 3900X and so on, because I really want to know. I visited the Pulsar booth uh, at Gamescom 2024 and they actually sent me an email because they saw the video I made about Gamescom 2024, by the way, check it out here. And they sent me four mice and a, and a mouse pad as well. In this case, the Pulsar X2 V2, which is kind of a, an ambidextrous mouse. And, and well, it comes with, with a 4K dongle, 26,000 DPI and so on. And it comes with a Demon Slayer theme, which is actually pretty nice. I just wanted to show you. We also have the X2H Clear, which is kind of transparent. The, the mouse is transparent and it's pretty, pretty nice. And we have the X2H, but this time instead of being, instead of being transparent, we actually have the eSports the eSports title and they do differ in terms of the dongle, some, some bring a, a dongle for higher DPIs and higher polling rates and so on and others just bring a normal dongle for lower uh, polling rates, so it depends, the version also depends and in this case this one is size 2 instead of size 1. Before going to Gamescom I actually bought one of their mice, which was this version, but instead of being the Elite, as you see here, was actually the white one, that it's kind of the lower tier one, and I found it to be spectacular, very responsive, very, very light, uh, and I mean, I just, after that, I just knew that Pulsar was a very good brand, and for example, this one, which is kind of the Elite, it's still the same version, the X Lite V3, but in this case, it is the eSports Edition. Different versions actually bring different things, like for example, here, the wheel is different as well. You have the OLED screen here, and if you connect the mouse, this is what you see, so an OLED monitor here, an OLED screen, which is quite nice for you to control things without needing to go to the software. Just like it very much. I know this wasn't sponsored, I was actually, and I will do a YouTube Shorts unboxing these products, all these mice, but yeah, I just like them so much that I wanted to share, basically that's it. So once again, thank you for watching the video, and if you watched me just showing you stuff from Pulsar, leave a comment in the comment section telling me that, uh, well, you actually saw this part of the video because I want to I, I want to know how many of you actually watched this part, so thank you very much, really, and thank you Pulsar for sending, and thanks to our sponsors, and thank you all for watching the video, it really uh, makes me, well, it really makes me eager and makes me happy about making this video, so see you in the next one, I guess. Cheers.